Welcome to the second edition of Business Right here on PM News. Good afternoon to you in case you've just tuned in. Welcome. The South African Mining Development Association, as you heard earlier, says that it's prepared to expose all multinational companies involved in transfer pricing in the mining industry. Transfer pricing is the discounted sale of local commodities to offshore markets. They are often sold to companies within the same group in order to resell them at higher prices offshore. And to talk about this, we have the chairperson of the South African Mining Development Association, Mayor Bridget Khadebe. Good afternoon and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. The, the Let's simplify this concept with, uh, in, in layman terms. What does transfer pricing mean? Okay, layman terms. Yeah. If you have bought furniture and you are a layman and the furniture you bought from Ellerins or Bacos Brothers and you have not paid for that furniture, to the extent that you haven't paid for the furniture, the furniture shop will come and take the furniture away from you, isn't it? So you find that a lot of problems in South Africa starts with that, and, and non-ownership. Ownership of the majority of the mines, ownership of the economy still vests in the hands of foreigners through transfer pricing. Why? Because when the local people, and transfer pricing doesn't affect black people only, it's not a black thing, it's a South African thing. Because we have, we have conquered, to a certain extent, the major challenges of the, uh, the political apartheid. It's the economic apartheid that we're still working through the symptoms of, of, of the political apartheid, but it's the economic apartheid that's still prevailing. Because you find that in South Africa to date, the bulk of the ownership is the hand of the South African economy in the mining industry. 49 listed companies is foreign owned. Now, the ownership is such that when you have a company that is listed offshore and you have a situation where you sell to yourself offshore the, the, the commodity that comes from your mine at a reduced price, you are not allowing the South African tax pay payer to get the benefits. You're mm -hmm. not. Because what you are simply doing is that by, by virtue of uh, uh, reflecting a reduced price on your balance sheet, the taxman cannot tax the real price of what you would have gotten if that income was being the full income coming from offshore. Is it all the mines that are doing that or some? You know, <laughs> you can't say all the mines because the B companies do not own mines, okay? You have the 49 listed companies and you can't say all the mines because the primary list, the companies that have a primary list in South Africa, um, Anglo Gold Ashanti, Impala, Roba Fugeng and others, would then not be so guilty if ever they were doing it. It would be impossible or very difficult to do it because they are under the Reserve Bank jurisdiction. But if you own a company offshore and you have a, a, a trading company buying commodity at a discounted price, denying South Africa the full, the full value of what the commodity should be. You can't build the houses for your people if you're the government. You can't build the clinics. You can't build the roads. You can't build the, the, the schools, the universities. So it's affecting every South African. And South Africa, we all have to unite against this virus because if they were reflecting that in the balance sheet, the full income that they were getting. So, so workers so, so not has this been influencing the trend that we saw with other mines not being able to provide housing, schools and other amenities for their workers? It's clear if you unpack the income, the real income that you would have gotten out of the community that's offshore sold, you would find that throughout the years, the billions of money that would have come to South Africa is no more coming to South Africa, is now staying offshore. And that is why you have service delivery unrest. That is why you have Marikanis. That, that's why you have workers demanding more money, but they don't know how to articulate what it is, but they know that there's money there because they see how much oil comes out of the ground. L let's talk about the issue of compliance regarding what the mining charter says and what, what it says specifically with regards to the beneficiation process. Huh, that again, beneficiation. If you look at section 26 of the Act, it says any mine that sells it's all to an offshore provider, the offshore manufacturer that manufactures the end product. That offshore manufacturer has to apply to the government, the Department of Mines, for permission to beneficiate, 
to use that gold, platinum, chrome, whatever, to create the, old, the end product. Everything that you find here, it comes from the mining industry. Have they done it? That's what the DMR should be looking to, and that's what SARS should be looking to, and that's what the Department of Treasury should be looking to, and the Department of Finance. Look at who are these companies that have not become uh, 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 compliant in terms of Section 26 of the Act? What, what who are you, the companies? What, what do you propose then as some because, uh, what, what action should be taken? I propose that there has to be a, a, a transfer pricing a, 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 a committee that will look into this. And more than ever, the DMR will have to really be very diligent in terms of Section 100 of the Act, which talks about the charter compliance, so that at least 26% of the ownership vests in the hands of the black South Africans. But, but the workers have housing and living conditions, and we have human resource development of 40% this year. You have beneficiation, you have procurement, you have, you have human, de human, hum human community development, those are the elements of the charter. If you have all that collectively, would we have Marikanis? No. Would we have service deliveries? No. I'm not saying it's the mining communities or mining investors' job to take the government's job over. But these mines must not forget. They went to government, they made commitments, they got mining permits, and they've got the license to trade. And as part of the commitment they made, they had said they're going to apply the, 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 the rules of the game, Section 100 of the Act, Section 26 of the Act. And all the sections that says the transformation of the economy should be done. And the economic emancipation of the majority of the people must be by South Africans, for South Africans, oh. and South Africa first. Okay. Now, yesterday in Parliament, you said that you were not comfortable to mention their names. And of course, we had other respondents who were saying, for example, like Julius Malema saying that, bring them here, we will name and shame them, and we will march to their offices, especially those that are not complying. So are we going to see... a time where they are named and shamed? The only reason why I could not say anything, remember we signed confidentialities, I'll be sued. But if government calls me and I've been naming and shaming them at the Department of Mines, all Malema or anybody has to do in South Africa is ask the Department of Mines to call those companies up to the portfolio committee and let them, we're their, we're their partners. And if I'm supposed to come, fine, and give us that protection. And they must, they must denounce their confidentiality so that we expose what is happening. I'm sitting here with great unhappiness because I refuse to sign certain amendments, certain clauses that my partners want us to sign because they're not compliant with the law. And some of the part partners are not even paying the tax. So we are saying, no, we're not going to do it. But then you've got government parastatals and some B companies that are siding with those people. But, I mean, you can't blame our PE companies. You know, an empty stomach doesn't know much, you know. Mm -hmm. Or they know much, but they, they, they're vulnerable, okay? But when you have a parastatal that has been told to be compliant and still signing agreements and amendments that are wrong, then you have a problem. So it, it has to be an overall look, not only from the producer side of p p point of view, but not only from the stakeholders point of view, also from the parastatals that are helping with the funding or parastatals that are party to, mm -hmm. to the partnerships. And you know, it has to be collective ownership in terms of p compliance measures that will have to be taken into. The government has a right to, imp to impose section 47. There are many sections in the law that can be imposed for those companies that are not compliant. Now I'm sitting here wondering what is gonna happen it has to happen. Right. The mandate the people gave, the ruling party, the mandate that the other party members gave their parties is that the economy of South Africa must function. All right. Thank you very much for talking to us right here on PM News. And of course, I believe that this is not a subject that we can exhaust in five minutes. No. But the good news for our viewers is that if you want to hear more about this subject, uh, join Mpotedu on Question Time right after uh, our program. And of course, he will get more into the details with the very same Mayor Bridget Motepe, who is the chairperson of the South African Mining Development Association right here. Channel 404 SAB.